Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Great Lakes Shipwreck Research Group. I'm Brendan Baylod, the, the host of the site, and I've got a good video in store for you tonight. Um, this one is on SideScan Sonar. It's going to be the first in a series. Uh, people have been asking me uh, how we use sonar to find shipwrecks. Uh, it's one of the main tools we use, um, and there are many different types of sonar, different uh, you know uh, purposes, different price ranges, and um, different technologies that are used in the different sonars. So. I wanted to make a presentation for everybody that's not so much up on the on the high shelves like so much of what you read online is with a lot of uh, a lot of math and a lot of physics and a lot of formulas uh, and yet I don't want to dumb it down uh, for like much of what you see either so this is going to be right in between um, this uh, series of presentations is made for people who are actually thinking about getting a side scan sonar not just to find fish but to get one to actually find stuff on the bottom um, so what you see here is me with my deep vision little eye, which is uh, an archeological surveying sonar. And in back of me is a big game hunter. Uh, that's the Great Lake Shipwreck uh, Museum's research vessel, David Boyd, and their big marine sonics towfish. And as you can see, uh, I've got a little bit of towfish envy there. But in point of fact, these sonars do very different jobs. And so I wanna talk about, uh, about some of that detail in the next uh, series of videos. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, what is side scan sonar? So at its base, side scan sonar is an acoustical device. It's using sound waves to paint a three-dimensional bottom of the ocean or lake or river, whatever body of water you're in. And a side scan sonar consists of essentially two devices. One is some sort of a readout device up on the boat that's either uh, in the past was a paper graph um, or could have been an oscilloscope screen uh, nowadays, we usually use uh, uh, an LED monitor and uh, we record it. The other part of the device is the um, piezoelectric transducer. And so what that does is it uses an electrical uh, impulse to generate a, a, an ultrasonic uh, ping or sound ping. And it puts out many pings a second into the water column. And then it listens for the return of those pings and it listens for distortions in those pings, in those sound waves that go out. And based upon how that wave is distorted, it literally paints a picture of what it encountered as it propagated out through the water and across the, the, the lake bottom and then returned. Um, so what you see down here in the lower left-hand corner um, is uh, beam patterns. What it looks like from the front, you can see the lobes as they come out from the piezoelectric transducer, uh, what they're shaped like. They actually go up and hit the surface uh, in some instances, particularly if, it, if you're running shallow. Um, and then you, you can also see that they don't shoot directly under the fish. You get this uh, dead area under the fish. Here's an image of what they look like from the, from the top, which is quite interesting. The beam narrows as it goes out, and it has these uh, sort of new regular uh, feather shape as it uh, propagates. What that translates into is an image like you see here, where um, there's a black blank area. It looks almost like a piece of highway when you see it uh, in real life. And on either side is a picture of the bottom. And uh, as you can see, when the sound encounters a standing object, there's a shadow. Um, it's almost analogous to a light beam instead of a sound beam going out. It would be like shining a flashlight out through the water. And one of the things you can see in this image over to the left side here, right where the word shipwreck begins, is there's these waves in the water. This actually isn't the shape of the bottom. This is thermocline. This is differences in water density. And I'm going to talk about that quite a bit as we go on. But this is essentially how side scan works. Many side scans are deployed with a tow fish that is towed underwater to avoid those problems with water density changes and turbulence. Uh, the fish looks like the one up here. This is an imagenics uh, towfish. Uh, but others are deployed uh, nowadays to attached to the hull of the boat. Um, those are often used to find fish, but they can also have application for, uh, for finding uh, things on the bottom. This image is a real good one. It's uh, from a paper called Acquisition and Processing of Marine Seismic Data from 2018. Really good uh, source. So... That's the basics about side scan sonar and how it works. Um, a little bit more about it. So what you can see here that a, a towfish does is it, it, as it, over time, it sends out these pings. 
and receives them back. But it's moving forward through the water. If a boat is uh, stationary, if the, the transducer is not moving, you actually don't get good imagery of the bottom. So most side scans are hooked into a GPS system on the boat. And so they know how fast the boat's moving and they can, tra they can literally paint that picture and save that image correctly for the motion of the boat, for its speed going forward. And it knows how far back the unit, you can tell it how far back behind the boat your towfish is gonna be, that's the layback position. And so it'll literally put the right GPS coordinates over the picture of the bottom that it's making. So, a couple of things to mention. When, um, you know, the uh, ping goes out, it is going out at a particular time, and it's going out really fast and coming back really fast. Depending upon how often it pings, how many data points you get, you get, you know, a more or less accurate uh, version of the bottom. Um, but pings, the, the, the ping rate isn't the only uh, factor. Uh, one of the biggest factors is uh, in, in what you see on the bottom is the frequency of the wave, of the sound waves that are output. So those two factors, you know, how many, how many pings is the towfish making and how much, and what are the, is the frequency it's running at are really important. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that in light of this image here. This is an image I took of an uh, iron-hulled steamer called the Uwarda up in the Keweenaw waterway. Um, I took this with a very high resolution sonar. I was, my, my, my little eye, and I was running very slow. And what you see is, you know, a lot of what you saw in that image there, you see this line down the middle. That's where the towfish was passing. Here is where it struck the bottom. The sound wave went down on quite an angle from the fish, struck the bottom, then propagated out. And then this is sitting right on the edge of the Keweenaw waterway. In fact, on the edge of a 20 foot shear drop. And so here it came up the wall and then it actually encountered the shore here. So this isn't real return, but what you can see is you can see the detail of this image. The sound actually bounced down into the hold and is showing some random pieces of wood down here. Here's a steam engine. You can see the, the tops of the uh, boy of the, the, um, the cylinder heads on the steam engine. And you can see a tremendous amount of detail. So this is what uh, you know, a high frequency surveying sonar that's pinging really frequently will do. It'll give you a really high quality image like this. All right. Little bit more. I talked about layback. Um, you know, uh, it'll tell you. You have to tell it how far back your fish is going to be, if you want to know exactly where the G, you know if you want accurate uh, GPS coordinates. This is uh, images from William Creighton Fenn from Fenn Enterprises. He talks about how to calculate the layback based upon the depth of water you're at when a towfish cable you know is deployed. It's not sitting out here in a straight line. It's uh, a catenary uh, curve like this because of the water. And so it actually is a little closer to the boat than you might think. Um, so you do need a GPS, generally speaking, to uh, do accurate uh, mapping with a side scan sonar. Um, all right. If you want to buy a side scan, there's a couple of really important things to consider. Uh, really, what do you want it for? You know, are you big game hunting? What I mean by that is, are you looking for ore boats? You know, do you want to go find the, the Carruthers? Do you want to find, uh, you know, two 300 foot ships? Or are you interested in finding smaller or broken wrecks, underwater archeology, span maybe little schooners? Um, are you doing survey? Are you in rivers? Are you in lakes? Maybe you want something that's small, light, or portable that you can use out of a raft or of a canoe. Uh, those are all different units that, you know, that you'd be looking for for those. Um, so in general, there's a couple of general principles I can give you for sonars. Um, if you want to, you know, for this, for, for a given price, you know, if you want to, you know, not spend a lot, you have a choice. You can either get a high range, in other words, you can see far out, but then you're going to get low resolution, or you can get high resolution, but you'll have lower range. And that's in the, say, $5,000 and less market. So for $1,000, you can get a hull mounted. Uh, Garmin, uh, you know, uh, sonar that has a good, nice, low resolution, uh, hull mounted uh, re transducer, it's going to see out uh, 1,200 feet. So you're going to get paint, be able to paint roughly a half a mile 
of bottom. But if you ran over a couple of broken boards, you know, you're not going to see them. Uh, in fact, uh, even at close resolution, you won't get a you know beautiful picture like I had of the UR to, you know, you'll get, you'll see there's a wreck there, certainly, but you won't see boards inside the hold, for example. Likewise, you know, my deep uh, vision little eye didn't cost that much. I can get high resolution, but I can only see out 400 feet uh, per side usable, you know, and it's got a short cable, you know, a 60 foot cable. So I can't do deep water searching, right? Um, so that's kind of the trade off. If you don't want to spend much money, you can either get high range or high resolution, which you can't have both. If you want to spend more money, you can get both. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Some other things that you can get for uh, usually low price is tight integration with a laptop or PC. Um, that's a little harder to get in the lower price range. Most of the Garmin's and other fish finders, you know, you have to pull the chip out and then you have to plug it into your laptop into a special piece of software to have it, you know, gridded or mosaic it. My little eye, which is a little more expensive, uh, has that the software is there on the on the laptop and it's it'll do mosaic gridding it'll do overlay on charts it's uh, got some pretty powerful software um, but you have to pay a little more for that the map and mosaic functionality is really nice because you can see exactly where you've searched and you can see if you've missed any parts uh, likewise you can you know build bottom maps say you're mapping a bay for small pieces of archaeological matter you can actually map that and show every little piece you know, which is kind of nice. Or if you're mapping a large shipwreck, you can actually show the layout of the wreck. But maybe you want everything, right? And you have some money to spend. Um, then you're looking at one of the more expensive models. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of those models in the next video. Um, so please stay tuned. Um, this is going to be a series, and I'm going to tell you a lot more about sonar and how to interpret side scan sonar images. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you like it, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. And uh, please uh, consider joining our, uh, our, our group, the Great Lake Shipwreck Research Group. Uh, thanks so much.